This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Close Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here with you today. Uh, today's topic, I want to talk about something that's been around for a few years, but it's finally coming to a, I won't say painful end, but coming to an end here at the end of this year. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about stimulus package. I'm talking about the Trump executive order. No, I'm not talking about either of those. I'm talking about the hardest hit funds. I know a lot of people are like, oh, what the heck is hardest hit funds? Uh, for us old dog note investors that have been around for a while, the hardest hit funds was a plan put in place uh, back in 2010 to deal with all the people that were facing foreclosures and losing their home. And it was basically identified by the treasury, uh, or well, not really the treasury, the treasury is the one that's been basically working on it, but it was put in place um, des- provided to p- provide assistance for, to struggling homeowners throughout modifications, mortgage payment assistance, and then different uh, assistance or transition assistance programs, okay? And uh, most of the states were given m- hundreds of million dollars, billions of dollars in the case of California and Florida, which are two of the states up there. But it was literally put in place uh, by the Obama and the, uh, the Bush administration to give millions of dollars, do- literally a tons of money to people facing foreclosure. Now, the hardest hit funds, it's a government regulated thing and each state that has it gives different type of classifications to it. Now, what I mean by classifications, they, they deliver it differently. They make you jump through different hoops depending on what state you're in. But some of the funds they would give to you would be for back payments or to future payments. And it was really kind of an interesting thing. The reason I bring this up is out of the blue, my servicer emails me and say, hey, one of your borrowers has qualified. It looks like they're going to qualify for the hardest hit funds program. Now, I haven't had a hardest hit fund go through in it's been probably two years at least. And I wanted to make some clarification on, us, on exactly what's available or what's not available, what states are involved, if you should be targeting these you know, assets in these states to take down. So let's start with the nitty gritty. All right. The nitty gritty by being the states that actually have this program, okay? Um, Alabama, Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Mississippi, Nevada, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, and our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., okay? Now, those 18 states plus D.C. are those areas. And what happened is the hardest hit funds, basically, the hardest hit funds had basically 7.6 billion, that's B with a billion with a B, to support homeowners in states hit hardest by the economic crisis dating back to 2010. Now, what happens is it basically, a lot of money got used. Obama added another 2 billion to it during his administration to drag it a little bit. Now, some What's kind of funny is each state, while it was given this money, they didn't have a clear defined path on how to use it. So the different you know, 18 states plus DC all have put together different qualifications. Some of it can be towards past, some of it's gotta be towards future payments, some it can all go towards back. It all can vary a little bit, and especially the amounts can vary differently. Some like California, which allow, would allow you to put like $7,500 towards back payments and the, and the rest of the money would give you would go towards future payments. Um, it had to be on first liens. Second liens didn't qualify. Contract for deeds didn't qualify in a lot of states because they weren't considered a traditional mortgage. So it's, it was designed to kind of, like I said, stabilize the markets, help people go through, but it, was, it wasn't a very high success rate. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind too, and I want to throw this out there, I haven't brought this up because it was not an easy thing to get approved for. Now, we talked about this on the show back... <laughs> I think one of our first 100, 150 episodes, we talked about the hardest hit funds. We haven't talked about it since then in the last two years because it just 
we didn't see a lot of it. Some states closed down, like Ohio closed down their entire program on the first allotment of money because they ran out of it. Then they laid all 150, uh, all their staff off. Then they got reapproved for more money. So it took them time to rehire those people back or train a new people. Now, some states like Illinois stopped taking applications for it a while back. Um, all the states that still allow it or still have money they've not uh, given out, like Florida was a, the slowest one of the, the game. All right. Florida was given the second most amount of money, but they also made it very difficult for people to hop through thing, hop through the, the equipment to provide proof of things. And I'll give you an example on some of the things that they required. Like we got this email and I give a big shout out to Shante Duffy who reached out to me and let me know. So when they're, they're going to, and what happens is they don't actually give this money to the borrowers. That's one thing I want, you know, they're not going to write a $25,000 check or $30,000 check to your borrower, because we all know what's gonna happen with that. They go on shopping, okay? They go on vacation, okay? A staycation, they can't trouble. But the borrower has to provide, um, I'm sorry, the servicer has to provide a list of documents and a list of information on the specific loan, okay? So like I you said, it's, um, the borrower has applied for assistance through the Illinois Emergency Assistance Program. It's basically a hardest hit fund program department. So in some cases, some states have different departments. States all have different variety of mortgage assistance programs. They all have, okay? Every state in the union has something. Just it depends on what they can qualify, what they you can or can't qualify for, and how far behind they are. I mean, we've dealt with borrowers reaching out to their even cities in different areas, and they've gotten help from different departments and church groups, other things like that, okay? But, um, and your borrower has been found eligible for their program. We are required to send them the below information on the loan in order for them to approve her. The origination date, the loan unpaid, uh, a loan un UPB unpaid principal balance, the next payment due date, the total past due less fees, a quote good through date, so like good through the end of the month, good through whatever, okay? Current monthly PITI, okay? All right. Um, Let's see here, uh, the performance status, basically their payment history, okay? Objection, objection and objection reason, why they would not if we didn't, if we, we objected to them and why that would be of them getting qualified for the, well, I'm not gonna object, <laughs> okay? Break down a service incurred cost for reimbursement. So basically giving them a full kind of, hey, where are you at? What's the late the past dues, that kind of stuff, okay? So they'll be sending the request information, including the monthly escrow payment information. So that's a good thing. So what happens? So the borrowers applied for this. And obviously, you got to be showing um, if they're working, what they're making. They've got to file those kind of things. And well, if they get qualified, great. Then what happens is the state agency, in this case, the Illinois Housing Department of Development Authority, would then send the money to the servicing company, not the borrower. They would be for my servicing company, Mass Management. They'd be wiring the money directly into Mass Management. And they'd be broken down, okay? So much of this goes towards her six months that she's passed due on, or 12 months that she's packed, passed due on. Or so much goes towards the back payments, and then a chunk of them goes to the future payments. Now, that's a beautiful thing. Now, what has been kind of an interesting thing over the last two years, which has kind of upset me, all right? This doesn't upset me in a way that it's anything to do with what we're doing. What it upsets me is the fact that some people out there in the industry have been telling people, oh, you should go buy loans in just the hardest hit fund states because you, you, that's easy money. And that is not the truth, okay? I believe if you look back, if you go to each state's hardest hit fund department, and it's really easy to check this out. If you go to just basically, just Google hardest hit fund, it'll take you to making home, making home affordable .gov, okay? Um, that'll take you into each state. And, and like I said, some states have stopped taking applications. Some have run out, used all their money up relatively quickly. Uh, what we saw was that a lot of times there was a lot of applications that were filed initially. And then the departments went back for secondary information and the borrower didn't respond. Okay. I'll give you an example. Um, 93,000 people in California alone have qualified for <laughs> more than $2 billion provided to avoid foreclosures, okay? 
That's quite a, a chunk of people. That's just California alone. Now, looking at like one of the other bigger states, Arizona, I wonder if Arizona has information. I'm gonna literally click on their website. Um, I don't see anything. Save our home foreclosure assistance. Here you go. You have an online a self-assessment to qualify. So you really need to check state by state levels on this one to see what state qualifies and what state's not. So that's what I'm trying to get at though. There have been people out there and I won't name names, okay? But oh, like I said, go buy, oh, you should go buy loans in the hardest fund states because that should be your number one priority. And that's the biggest case, biggest bullshit flat out lie most of the time. If I have stuff happens on the hardest hit funds, it's totally a cherry on top. I don't focus on these 18 states plus the District of Columbia. That's not in my top at all due diligence. I don't even put it on my due diligence checklist, okay? First and foremost, I'm not buying in Kentucky because of the fact that you need a million dollar bond there. I don't like New Jersey because it takes forever to foreclose. You know, I don't see much stuff in Rhode Island, okay? Oregon's overpriced and need licensing, okay? So, well, a lot, California, way overpriced for the most part. For what I could buy one place in California, I could buy half of Ohio, you know what I mean? So that's the thing to keep it out. Here's the thing I wanna put, the reason I bring this up now, okay? This may be something you may want to reach out to your borrowers and see if they qualify, all right? This would be something that you would have to do a lot. Of, the servicers can't reach out to the hardest hit fund agencies and see the borrowers. The borrower actually has to be the one that reaches out. They have to be the one that provides the information. They have to be the ones that actually reach it. Now, I know some uh, note investors of mine, like in Michigan, I got some friends up in Michigan. Now, they really utilized the hardest hit funds when it first came out. They actually went door to door. Now, they were only buying in Michigan, okay? But, and they were buying first liens, owner-occupied loans. This does not work on a vacant loan or a vacant property where the bars walked off, okay? This does not work on any loans you've already foreclosed on. This has got to be occupied, borrowers living in it, primary residence, doesn't work for investment or second homes, all right? And the borrower's got to qualify for it. They got to send in their information. And you don't ask me what goes into it. You need to actually go and check out each state. But what I would be doing, since we're all sitting around in forbearance land right now, is with now being the middle of October, as I'm recording this, you technically have two months left before they stop taking applications on this because it's the whole program is basically going to be ending December 31st. Now, could Trump in a new stimulus package throw something in there, more money on this to extend it? Yes, he could. I don't think he will. What I think he'll do, if he does anything like this, he's just not going to focus on these 18 or 19 states, because these are based on 10-year-old, basically, statistics, okay? I think what he would do is probably let this thing die and probably come up with something similar on a nationwide basis and put it out there for majority of states, okay? Now, um, if some governors claim, you know, disaster areas for defaults and foreclosures and stuff like that, they may, uh, you know, try to get their state as a disaster area. We've seen this happen before where things get stopped out. Now, the thing I can keep in mind here, when you look at these 18 states, like Arizona doesn't have, has one of the lowest default rates in the country, okay? Now, one of the things that we like to look at is a website, and I'm gonna go actually, if you're listening to me on here, on my episode here, there's a website I like to go to called the Housing Hardship Index. If you just Google that, bankrate.com is what pulls it up. Let me share my screen for those that are watching the video here. Now, I like looking at this on a monthly basis because of the fact it allows for me to see how states are ranking, whether they're moving up and moving down uh, on their default rates, okay? And this bank rate or the housing hardship index basically gives you an interactive map to click on each state and see how it's going. It ranks each state by defaults, okay? All right, now here's, this has changed. This changes on a month by month basis. Okay, so let's start with California. California, if you look at the old hardest hit funds, hard, is a hardship index of 16.76%. Their delinquency rate is 5.36. They were basically for August, because September's numbers aren't out yet. They're 13th worst, okay? Nevada, which is ranked number one as the worst hardship, okay? 
They rank number one as hardship because they have a delinquency rate of 8.58 on their mortgages, an unemployment rate of 13.2%. Now, going over to Massachusetts, they have a lower delinquency rate of 5.87, but let's see, we should stick to our states here. My apologies, I get a little sidetracked there. So we talked about Air, Alabama, uh, California, Arizona, going back to our state. So if we look at Alabama, uh, delinquency rate 8.37, Mississippi, delinquency rate 11.34, okay? Florida, delinquency rate 8.56. All Those are all above the national average. Uh, South Carolina, delinquency rate is actually better than the national average, 6.62. North, uh, sorry, that's North Carolina, 6.62. South Carolina, delinquency rate 7.3%. So it's actually, it's varied across the board. If we can get up here to little old Rhode Island, the delinquency rate is 7.52. Um, don't know what, uh, does not give me a, uh, a rate in Washington, D.C., okay? Now, the thing to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, is if you're going to be buying stuff, you know, let's look at, we didn't look at the bigger states, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, we didn't go through those, so let me go back there. So we go back up here to Michigan, delinquency rate is 5.76, that's actually really good. Ohio has 6.43%. Illinois, 7.28% delinquency rate, okay? Uh, New Jersey has 8.52, so it's above, it's the fifth worst based on August numbers. Uh, Illinois is at 7.19, Indiana, 7.28. Kentucky is at 5.55% delinquency rate. That's why I believe that they're gonna let this thing die and then reallocate, re kind of shuffle the, the numbers. Hey, let's take a look and see where everything's at right now. What are the states that are being hit the hardest in today's decade, in the 21st century here versus 2000s numbers, or 2010 numbers from 10 years ago? Now, um, now, can you target these? Yeah, you could, but you're probably not gonna be able to close on a lot of stuff and then get back out to the borrowers, trying to get them to apply before December 31st. As I said before, you wanna make sure and reach out and look at each state to see what the qualifications are. And then if you have, you have a, you know, your servicer or your, actually your servicer's not gonna reach out. You may want to take and reach out and mail directly to your borrowers individually. Now I would highly recommend you have your asset manager do this, or I would have hire a third party, like a, uh, an attorney, like Singer Law Group or another attorney in house that you have a third party either through legal zoom or your existing relationship and have them reach out and inform the borrowers that they may be able to qualify for these programs on a state by state level. Now, if you're buying in one particular state, it would do you a lot of good to obviously go to the website, scrub up, learn about what each is offered. What does the borrower have to fill out? What does a questionnaire look like? As I said before, my, some of my friends in Michigan, they literally put all the qualification questions. They created their own, um, um, basically custom list on a tablet and they would go door knocking one at a time and literally help each bar in Michigan that they had on their note, fill out the hardest hit funds to get them back on track. Now the goal here is, is you're not using, you're not going to get a payoff. You're going to basically get the bar back on track to avoid foreclosure. So they're going to be keeping them in their houses, but you can turn something of a non-performing note into a re-performing or give people basically that handout that they need. Now, I only bring this up, like I said before, because the fact is we got the, an email that one of our borrowers has been actively reaching out to it, and I love those kind of borrowers. It helps you. What I would do maybe is figure, look at your portfolio, look and check out the 18 states plus DC if you've got any loans in, in the capital, and create your own mail sheet. Send out a flyer, hey, attention, program expiring, you may qualify, something like this. Like I like to send out party envelopes, so it's the big you know, invites, hey, you may qualify already. And, and literally say, hey, we're here to work with you. And be willing to go back and forth on this. You may have to forgive some of the loan balance. That was some of the thing. You may have to forgive a chunk of the back payments. But if a borrower is going to make a lump sum and get back on track, I'm willing to forgive back payments to allow them to basically keep proceeding and move forward on a performing basis. Like doing a loan mod a trial payment plan where the government's paying it. Now, if what happens if the borrowers pay for a while and then they stop paying again, guess what? Start the foreclosure process over here. Start a legal aspect of that as well. But if you've got 65, 90 some odd days between now 
and really the end of the year, what, what's it going to hurt you? If your borrowers are asking for forbearance agreements or they're asking for some help, I would offer this up to them if they're in one of the states that's offered. Now, if they're not in the, any of the hardest fund states, check with the local state attorney general's office or the housing authority. See if each state offers up different individual programs for you. All right. You may be surprised. Some cities offer up programs. Now, we all know this has been kind of uh, in the press recently. Some of the cities, like Houston and others, have offered rent rental assistance programs that obviously got gobbled up immediately. And the little bit of press that some, they were doing willing to help people, like we saw this happen in Houston. They put together $15 million to help Houston um, people that were out of work to stay in their houses. And went, it was gone in a day. It helped like 8,400 people. Well, then everybody else says, well, I didn't qualify. Well, you're late to the table. So you got to be able to qualify. You got to be able to jump through the hoops the government wants you to do to get this. But hey, if you've got a bar that really wants to stay in their house and they apply for this, I'm willing to work with that bar. Or especially if I bought it as a non-performing note and I bought it as a big enough discount. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to help somebody stay in their house if somebody else is, if the government's willing to give you some money, willing to give the bar some money to pay directly to your service server, which where does that go? That goes in your hip national bank. That goes in your pocket, ladies and gentlemen. And why not? So I haven't talked much about this because I haven't seen hardly any of this stuff done. We've had a few hardest hit funds come through in our day. I was really kind of surprised to see this. So I thought, what the heck? I'll talk about a podcast at this point. But big caveat here, do not go buy notes in states that have hardest hit funds as your number one goal. Oh, I, I, I hardest hit funds. I'm going to get that approved 100% of the time. No, it's about a 5 to 10% approval rate, okay? So if that's your number one exit strategy, you're going to be highly disappointed 95, if not 100% of the time, because it varies on a state-by-state -state basis, and you, your borrower's got to fall through the paperwork. So you almost have to hold their hands to get them to qualify for it. So something to keep in mind there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's the thing. Um, I don't believe this works for owner. It might work for owner finance, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe it works for owner finance loans. Um, it may, I may, I may stand corrected. It may very well if you're under finance loans. I have to look at it state by state basis, but I think it's mostly institutional debt for you. Now, I don't believe it could be on an owner on a wraparound mortgage. I think it's got to be either a first lien and a wraparound mortgage is technically a second lien because it encumbers an underlying first lien. If you're behind on the owner finance loan, that doesn't count because the underlying first lien may still be current. So you definitely want to check on a state by state basis and see what's going on with it. But like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, definitely interesting times. Surprised to see this. I just think we're going to see something get moved into next uh, next year with this from the Trump administration or whoever ends up winning. Uh, I honestly don't think Biden's going to win, but hey, I could be wrong. So uh, if that's the case, who knows what's going to happen. But honestly, it's still not going to affect you guys buying notes. Anyway, this is just an exit strategy for you to cash in a little bit and get some Uncle Sam's government cheese. All right. So check it out. Go to just Google hardesthitfunds.com or the main website, as I said before, is makinghomeaffordable.gov, G-O-V, makinghomeaffordable.gov and looking for the hardest hit funds out there. So go out, check it out, guys. And uh, we'll see you guys all at the top, everybody. Bye.